Hey guys, Todd here. Today we're going to install the Morimoto XB LED headlights on the Ford Bronco. The tools I'll be using for this installation are an electric impact driver and ratchet with 10 millimeter and eight millimeter sockets, a T25 Torx bit, a Phillips head screwdriver, and a fastener removal tool. Let's go ahead and get started. All right, now what we need to do is go ahead and remove our radiator cover. So we've got eight push pins that need to come out. All these push pins, basically what you need to do is get underneath it and it's a dual stage push pin. So you pull the first part out and the second part comes out as well. Do that with all eight of them. All right, now we can go ahead and lift our cover out along with the inlet going into the intake. Set off to the side. All right, now we've got four bolts that hold the grill onto the upper mount. So we're gonna pull those out with a 10 millimeter. All right, now if you have a front-facing camera on your grill, you need to first disconnect these two pieces right here. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna push in on this piece and this pops out. And then this portion right here, the sides squeeze in together and then that pops out like so. All right, all that is holding this grill on now is clips. So we're gonna start pulling it away. First, we're gonna go to the sides and just kind of pry back on it to pop it loose. And then we can just gently pull from the bottom and lift it up and out of the way. All right, so now we need to take loose our lower valence. In order to do that, we first need to loosen up our fender. So just inside the fender, there's a little lever. You turn it 90 degrees and that fender can come loose just like so. Now we can kind of reach back here and pull straight out. Do the same thing on the opposite side and then work it from one side to the other, pulling it free from the clips. Right now we're on the driver's side. What we do here on the driver's side, we'll be doing the exact same thing on the passenger side, just a mirror image. So we've got a couple of bolts to pull out and then also a plastic push pin. So we're gonna take the push pin out first. So you use a fast removal tool to pop that out. And then a 10 millimeter to take out the two bolts. All right, now we've got one last bolt holding this in, so we're gonna go ahead and pull that out with an eight millimeter. All right, and the only thing that's holding in now is just clips, so we're gonna go ahead and pull it back. All right, and once we bring it back, we can go ahead and disconnect the harness and pull it out of the way. Okay, so now here we are at the fuse panel underneath the hood. This is on the driver's side, and this is the front of the vehicle. So what we're gonna look at here with the fuse panel, I've already got the lid pulled off. Um, if you look up at the second mounting location directly in front of that, you're gonna see uh, actually three 10 amp fuses. The third one back, I've already got pulled out. So we're gonna set that to the side. Um, and in our kit, we're going to have a double fuse tap so you've already got two 10 amp fuses here. Um, what we're gonna do is we're going to plug that in to that location, and then we're gonna run it out this way. Might be a good idea to notch out this little area right here. So whenever you put your fuse panel back over top the cover, that it doesn't pinch it. All right, so now we're gonna go ahead and route this harness up towards the front. We're just gonna leave it be for right now because next we're gonna turn to our battery. We've got another harness that's gonna attach to our battery. Um, that's going to have a fuse holder on it. Uh, it looks just like that one. So what we're gonna do is kind of route that out just to keep it out of the way for right now. And we need to mount red to positive and black to negative. So we're gonna take a 10 millimeter and loosen up this post on the negative terminal.
Go ahead and tighten that back down with the 10 millimeter. And then we're gonna pop this off here and we're gonna loosen up this nut on the positive side. Go ahead and attach that. And snug that one down with a 10. Let's go ahead and move to our light area. Okay, now we do have a few different harnesses. Let me go over them all real quick. This right here is our DRL harness. This came from our fuse panel. Uh, we've got an additional piece that's gonna come off. This is gonna route to our passenger side. So this is gonna be sitting here at the driver's side and routed to the passenger side. We do get some extra cable. I've just got that zip tied off to the side. They give you extra cable, depending on your configuration, you might need some extra cable. Uh, so I will be routing this to the passenger side. I'm just gonna set it down here for right now. Um, also, we've got uh, our power cable. This is coming from our battery. Uh, this is also going to be remaining on the driver's side and only on the driver's side. Um, and then this right here is the cable. This is our, our factory harness that came off of the factory lamp. So we've got that here too. Now, as well as all of this, we're going to have one more harness. Uh, this is from our kit. We're going to have one that has a, um, one end is going to have two connectors on it. That's going to stay to the driver's side. And the side that's got one connector is going to route over to the passenger side. So I'm going to go ahead and leave this here. I'm going to route these two over to the passenger side. Then we're going to come back and hook our uh, driver's side lamp up and go ahead and get that installed. Okay, so this is our driver's side headlamp. Now this is the back side. We've got a lot of different things going on here, but it's really pretty straightforward. Um, what I want to draw your attention to first is um, this connector coming off of the back side uh, from the side, and then also this connector right here. The connector that's going over to the passenger side that has the two ends on it is going to connect into here. So you can only connect it one way. This one goes here, and then this one is going to connect like so. All right, now we're gonna go ahead and work this way. So this is the connector that's gonna go to our power cable. So we're going to connect that together. Um, next, we're going to connect this DRL together. So that goes together. And now I also want to draw your attention to this connector right here that's on the back of this housing. You've got a pink wire coming on one side, a purple wire coming on the other side. It's the only connector with just one wire coming on each side. Now, this is your sequential or not sequential connector. So if you want this to be a non-sequential turn signal where it's just solid, then what you're gonna do is you're gonna keep that connected. If you want your turn signal to be sequential where it kind of flashes out, then you can disconnect that and leave that disconnected. That makes your turn signal sequential. If you leave this disconnected, make sure you tie all that off with some electrical tape and make sure you don't get any kind of uh, condensation or anything in there. This is not going to be a sequential, this is going to be a solid, so we are going to leave that connected and we're good to go. Last thing we have to do is connect this to our factory uh, cable. So we're just gonna go ahead and plug that in. Now we can go ahead and lift up our light and get it hooked up to the factory mounting positions. All right, so you'll notice it lines up to the factory holes and we're gonna be using the factory hardware and fasteners to reinstall it. So right back here, we're gonna use the plastic push pin that goes right into here. Uh, and in this hole, we've got the black bolt with a 10 millimeter head. We'll go ahead and get that started. And then here we've got the silver bolt with a 10 millimeter head. We'll go ahead and get that one started. And we'll tighten both of those down with a 10 millimeter socket. And this tab down here is going to line up to the factory hole as well. So we're gonna go ahead and put the factory hardware back in there. And we'll tighten that down with an eight millimeter. Let's go ahead and head on over to the passenger side. All right, now over here on the passenger side, we're gonna have a little bit less to connect. So let's go ahead and start with this one over here. This is going to connect to 
one of the harnesses that came over from the passenger side or the driver's side. Go ahead and plug that in. And next we're gonna have the DRL harness that came from the driver's side. Connect that together. Before we connect the main harness, again, I wanna draw your attention to this one, pink on one side, purple on the other side. If it's connected together, that's gonna to give you a solid turn signal. And if it's unplugged and taped off, that will give you a sequential turn signal. Now we're gonna go ahead and connect to our main factory harness and go ahead and slide it in place. All right, now we can go ahead and install our passenger side headlight the same way we did the driver's side. All right, now go ahead and secure all of your wires with zip ties. All right, now we're gonna go ahead and put everything back together the way it came off, but just in reverse. So we're gonna start with the bottom trim. Now, mine might be a little more, more tight than yours just because I've got a winch that is making it a little bit tighter. But once you get that in place, uh, line up all of the connectors and then start with the center, push those in and work your way to the side. And then stretch that over and snap that in. And then go ahead and reconnect your fender and repeat the same on the opposite side. All right, next we can go ahead and get our factory grill lined up. Once it's all lined up, just pop it in place and then we can attach our factory hardware at the top and tighten that down with a 10 millimeter. Right now we can reconnect these up here. Just pop them right in place. And now let's go ahead and install our upper valence. And go ahead and reinstall the push pin fasteners. Well, that concludes the installation. If you have any questions, call the experts or visit us online at realtruck.com.